It's entertainment for the classic movie fan. See you in October. Hi everybody, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for joining us this afternoon on TCM. Throughout the late 1930s and 40s, Errol Flynn was the king of the swashbucklers on the big screen, working mostly for the studio that originally signed him in 1934, that was Warner Brothers. But by the end of the 40s, Flynn's off-screen antics were catching up to him as popularity was beginning to fade. His best roles in this period came on loan outs to other studios. And up next, we have Flynn in one of those movies, part of a two-picture deal with MGM. From 1950, it's Kim. The story is adapted from the classic adventure tale by Rudyard Kipling. It takes place in 19th century colonial India. The story follows a young orphan played by Dean Stockwell as he gets mixed up in a British intelligence operation with Paul Lucas as a philosophical llama and Flynn as an Afghan horse trader who doubles as a British agent. MGM actually gave Flynn a choice between making Kim, which would be partially shot on location in India, or going to Africa to make King Solomon's mines. Flynn chose the all-expense-paid trip to India, leaving Stuart Granger to cozy up to Deborah Carr in Africa. The script for Kim was kicked around at MGM for years before finally going into production. It was set to go in 1938, but when World War II began in 39, production was shut down. After the war, the studio started making plans to shoot the film again, with Mickey Rooney, Conrad Veidt, and Basil Rathbone attached. But they soon learned the political climate in India was much too dangerous, and the story's imperialist implications would be too offensive to the Indian people. But once Indian independence was achieved in 1947, MGM thought it was finally safe to launch the production, and they did shoot key scenes in India. From director Victor Seville in 1950, here's the movie, Errol Flynn in Kim. Thank you. 